When China became the world's factory, its economy boomed, causing a huge surge in energy needs. As its economy grew, so did its defense, especially its navy, making China now home to the largest navy in numbers. Fuel powers both its economy and military, but China's own oil production couldn't keep up with its soaring consumption, which jumped by 30% yearly at the start of the 21st century. It became evident that for China to maintain its economic momentum, it had to increasingly depend on importing fossil fuels via ships from the Middle East and Africa. As China's reliance on oil imports grew to sustain domestic stability and economic progress, safeguarding its sea routes became a top priority for the CCP and the CCP's close control over its people. China frequently asserts its dominance of the South China Sea with its Coast Guard ships especially aggressive towards the Philippines, spraying water cannons at them. They claim most of the South China Sea, where the Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia and Brunei also say it's theirs. But even though a court said China's claims are bogus in 2016, they're still pushing it. The South China Sea is a huge deal for trade, worth over $3 trillion a year, so this fight isn't going away anytime soon. Today we witness numerous countries falling into what's known as the Chinese debt trap. China is particularly fond of these types of nations, ones with corrupt political leaders who accept loans from China at exorbitant interest rates. Consequently, these countries become indebted to China and susceptible to its influence because they struggle to repay the loans. As a result, China often demands concessions such as territorial assets similar to what happened in Sri Lanka and the Maldives. But China has one problem, they call it, the Malacca Dilemma. The Strait of Malacca connects the Andaman Sea and the South China Sea, running between the Indonesian island of Sumatra to the west and the peninsular Malaysia and extreme southern Thailand to the east. It's the shortest sea route between the Middle East and East Asia, helping to reduce the time and cost of transportation among Asia the Middle East and Europe. This corridor sees about 60% of all the world's ships passing through, making it super important for shipping goods around. This corridor isn't just busy with trade, it's the top spot for supplying oil to two major Asian players, the People's Republic of China and Japan. But here's where things get interesting. India steps into the picture and becomes a major worry for China. India has strategic control over the 10-degree channel, a narrow strip of water within its exclusive economic zone, neatly dividing the Andaman and Nicobar Islands in the eastern Indian Ocean. This channel is more than just a stretch of water, it's a crucial pathway linking the Indian Ocean to the Malacca Strait, a vital point for global shipping and trade. In the event of a major conflict, Chinese oil tankers in the Indian Ocean would be in a precarious position. Chinese naval ships could essentially find themselves stuck in the Indian Ocean, unable to easily navigate out. They'd be in a tight spot, with hardly any air support available since China lacks its own bases or facilities in the area. To address this, China plans to seize control of the entire region using what they call a string of pearls strategy. This involves establishing a network of military bases and ports across the region, essentially encircling key areas with their influence. The Chinese maritime strategy seeks to link up major ports throughout the Indian Ocean region, deliberately excluding any ports within Indian territory. This indicates a broader plan to isolate Indian trade routes and deal a significant blow to the Indian economy. Such as constructing the Gwadar port in Pakistan, assuming control of the Hambantota port for 99 years in debt-ridden Sri Lanka, and securing a 50-year lease for $4 million on a tiny islet in the Maldives. These examples exemplify its multifaceted approach. This approach combines the string of pearls concept, the debt trap economic strategy and the broader Belt and Road Initiative. India on the other hand hasn't remained passive, in fact it has actively pursued the militarization of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. This move is seen as essential for India to uphold its sphere of influence in the region particularly as militarizing the Indian Ocean appears to be the most logical step. The Indian base in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, especially on Great Nicobar Island, 
strategically positions itself near the tip of Indonesia and at the entrance of the Malacca Strait. India plans to allocate $9 billion to transform these islands, a testament to its commitment to bolstering its presence and capabilities in the region. As mentioned earlier, the Malacca Strait links the Andaman Sea to the South China Sea. If China gains control over the South China Sea, it could potentially expand its military reach to dominate the Malacca Strait, an outcome that aligns with its strategic objectives. Naturally, India cannot afford to let that happen. India has been proactive in addressing this threat, both strategically and tactically, both on and off the battlefield. Over the past decade, India has forged numerous strategic partnerships, bolstering its position and capabilities in the region. From elevating its bilateral relationship with Australia, from a strategic partnership in 2009 to a comprehensive strategic partnership in 2020, along with forging similar bonds with the US and Japan, India has shown a commitment to deepening security cooperation. Not only has India bolstered its ties with the Philippines by supplying anti-ship missiles and engaging in further discussions for additional support, but it also extended a helping hand to Sri Lanka during an economic crisis triggered by China. While the Quad primarily emphasizes diplomatic and security collaboration, it holds the potential to transition into a formal security arrangement should tensions in the Indo-Pacific region escalate markedly. And Australia could potentially use its navy to secure and defend the Cocos and Keeling Islands if tensions with China escalated to the point of conflict. And in a direct response to China's Belt and Road Initiative, the India Middle East Europe Economic Corridor Project was recently signed at the G20 Summit in New Delhi. IMEC will include railroad, ship-to-rail networks, and road transport routes spanning two corridors. The East Corridor, linking India to the Arabian Gulf, and the Northern Corridor, connecting the Gulf to Europe. Signatories include India, the US, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, the European Union, Italy, France, and Germany. While China solidifies its control over the Pakistani port in Gwadar, India has struck a strategic deal for the Chab Chabahar port, with Iran in the Gulf of Oman. These actions underscore India's proactive stance in addressing China's advances in the region. And recently, Indian security agencies intercepted a ship bound for Pakistan from China at Mumbai, suspecting it of carrying a consignment possibly intended for Pakistan's nuclear and ballistic missile programs. A team from the Defense Research and Development Organization verified the contents which included a computer numerical control machine, deemed suitable for Pakistan's nuclear endeavors. Despite China's extensive network of military satellites, its power projection capability in the Indian Ocean remains limited. With just one dedicated base and smaller military posts, notably in Tajikistan, and lacking air cover for naval deployments in the Indian Ocean, in contrast, the U.S. identifies 11 potential Chinese bases on the ocean's periphery, reflecting China's diplomatic and commercial endeavors, particularly under the Belt and Road Initiative. However, these locations have not yet evolved into robust military assets, lacking a permanent presence of the People's Liberation Army or publicly known assurances of access during conflicts. On the other hand, India recently inaugurated an airstrip and jetty on the small island of Agalega in Mauritius, a move aimed at bolstering its maritime presence. Situated strategically along key maritime routes, particularly those leading to the east coast of Africa and the southern Indian Ocean, Agalega offers India a vital access point. This development enhances India's ability to monitor and potentially intercept maritime traffic, including movements by Chinese vessels, thereby reinforcing its maritime security posture. Additionally, India maintains other overseas military bases in locations such as Seychelles, Oman, and Madagascar. Meanwhile, China's Djibouti base faces challenges, lacking an airfield and surrounded by military facilities of seven other countries, including the US, France, and Britain. The contrasting presence of the U.S. in the Indian Ocean highlights a stark difference from its Cold War-era buildup, 
emphasizing the evolving dynamics in the region. The U.S. 5th Fleet is based in Bahrain, while the Japan-headquartered 7th Fleet operates out of Diego Garcia, a UK-administered atoll with runways for long-range bombers, and a lagoon adapted to house U.S. aircraft carriers. To the east, Australia is increasing patrols using its submarine hunting, P-8 Poseidon aircraft and is expanding a west coast base, for British and US nuclear-powered submarines, and eventually, Australian nuclear-powered boats. Therefore, despite China boasting the largest navy, it has yet to assert significant power projection globally, including in the Indian Ocean, where India historically holds dominance, both geographically and militarily. And recent developments suggest India's influence may further strengthen with its growing economic prowess.